Hello, Internet. This is you and Spence and ESC Insight calling. Well, Wills was nice. Onwards to Minsk. Yes, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Welcome to another roundup of the news from the world of Junior Eurovision and the Eurovision Song Contest. Coming up in today's 15, 20 minutes or so, hello, new national final, goodbye to a fan favourite, and the Melfest merry-go-round spins a little faster. <laughs> It is a relatively quiet period for news, it has to be said. There's lots of Junior Eurovision music videos have been posted, and we don't know many details from each country yet, so if you just need the highlights, that's pretty much it. But anyway, let's uh, break it down, uh, because we do have some big things. And the main one is our confirmed count for entries into the May contest is now at 39. Bulgaria has confirmed that they will not be sending an entry for the 2019 contest due to budgetary reasons. Uh, we're still waiting to hear publicly from Moldova, Russia and San Marino, but we do have nods of yes from Armenia and Australia over the last year. Now, in the terms of the ones that we're still waiting for, if they are entering, they will already have put their paperwork in with the EBU. Uh, that had to be done in September, but you did have a period uh, up till about mid-October, so now-ish, that you could withdraw without paying a penalty. But nothing in that says that you have to actually say it publicly. So we will just leave that up in the air and see what happens. <laughs> Right, quick focus on Junior Eurovision, which of course is November the 25th this year. Tickets are now sold out for the arena. It's absolutely full, but uh, there may be stuff left, you know, as a walk-up if you're actually in Minsk. It will be broadcast online through the Junior Eurovision YouTube channel, and of course all the host broadcasters and a number of others outside will be broadcasting the show as well. Uh, two results to pick up uh, from the period. The first one is Wales, and of course uh, the first Welsh national final for Junior Eurovision. Eurovision has taken place. Manu fought through uh, a first round that saw six running in total. A jury cut that down to three, and all three of them sang the winner's song. Uh, and the telly vote decided that Manu would be the performer to take that onwards to Minsk. The song is pretty much finished in terms of being polished and the video is expected imminently so depending on when this podcast goes up it's either just happened or it's about to head over to west 4 cs web pages to find details on that in terms of the national final itself it's the first one we'll run i've done a full write-up of it back at esc insight Ireland have uh, started their process through TGR and uh, the two qualifiers from the first semi-final are through, seven ran. There'll be three more semi-finals and up to two wild cards from those that didn't qualify, which will give us a national final taking place on November the 11th of up to 10. I say taking place on the 11th, I mean broadcast on the 11th. It'll actually be pre-recorded so you can get the songs and submissions and everything into the EBU in time, but that just keeps everything nice and close and tight and better run up for the broadcaster uh, other things to point out from Junior Eurovision, uh, Azerbaijan has submitted their song to the EBU now but we await the public reveal, uh, we're still waiting to hear that song and along with uh, the music from Poland, Macedonia and of course Ireland as we already know, uh, Georgia has released their song amongst many others uh, releasing their song and the music videos so uh, head over to the Junior Eurovision YouTube channel where you'll see the music videos the national final performances, selection performances uh, going on on that. Moving forward to the May contest and the adult Eurovision Song Contest. Look, there's a let's just get a couple of things right. There are a lot of big X Factor shows going on. Molto's X Factor started this week. And while UK X Factor doesn't select the song for Eurovision, there's a number of ESC alumni that are going in the mix. There's Dancing with the Stars on the Ice. It's got Sara Alto popping up here. We're not going to go do a blow by blow recap of all of the, the rounds of things like Malta X Factor or Operation Triumphal uh, from Spain. It, we'll keep you in eye and if there's anything that's big or important or flashy or names that you definitely recognise we'll bring them in but for the ones that are kind of just to the side and at the end 
you get this, the song selected. We're going to use our editorial judgment on that one. So just to keep you in the loop on that one. Uh, in terms of results, we don't have any officially for Eurovision in this show, but we can point out that the winner of the All Guy Second Chance Contest has been selected and announced, and it is Annalise from Italy. Il Mondo Prima di Te won with 350 points. It was third at San Remo this year and walks away with the Second Chance Trophy. Congratulations to Annalisa on that. In terms of country news, well, as we noted already, Australia has confirmed that it will be at the Song Contest, but it's also confirmed that it will be having its first national final. Uh, thankfully, we have somebody based in Australia to head up to the Gold Coast on February 9th. Charlene's tickets are already booked. Uh, Miff and Joel, who are the commentators for the main contest, will be hosting that. Call has gone out for song submissions. You can get them in. Make sure you do so by Sunday, the 4th of November. Uh, broadcaster DR has been asked to make 20% savings cuts uh, by the government over this year. Uh, there have been a number of layoffs announced, and that includes uh, Eurovision commentator Ole Topom. Uh, DR local radio has offered him a couple of jobs as well, so we may or may not see him. Uh, so Danish fans will be keeping an eye out for their own flag-flying commentator to see where he lands. France also in some recruitment changes as well. We have a new head of delegation in the form of Stephen Clarima, uh, replacing Eduardo Guerrero. Rassi, waiting for confirmation on what that will change, if anything, to destination. Eurovision previously announced that all the shows would be live. I suspect that that will carry on because part of this change is to bring everything into in-house and rostered staff, rostered staff at the French broadcaster. Georgia have announced that uh, Georgia Star will be selecting their performer for Eurovision. First rounds of auditions are starting on October the 27th in Tbilisi. Then it will go on a tour. They'll have their first air date during the first. See stuff about Malta, uh, X Factor and stuff. Uh, that applies here as well. Germany, uh, the workshop stage to select the artist has closed. Uh, there were 20 spaces. Uh, 15 acts remain out of that. Five declined to attend. Four wish to remain anonymous unless they make the final shortlist for the national final. Uh, and that should be announced early November. Following that, there will be details on how to get your song um, or get other songs submitted. If, you, if you're a songwriter, you can get in. And if not, you can you know keep an eye on the process. More details on that as they come to light. Israel, uh, not much news from there but worth noting that Netta is heading out on tour across Central Europe and the UK. Six dates in November covering Vienna, Zurich, Berlin, Paris, Cologne and London during November. Details at nettamusic.com Ireland has also sent out a call for submissions from accomplished songwriters and performers with a proven track record of success in the music industry. Interested? You've got till November the 23rd deadline-wise. Their details at RTE. Italy have also confirmed they will be heading to Tel Aviv in 2019 to sing at the Eurovision Song Contest. No mention, though, of the selection process. The obvious answer is something to do with San Remo, uh, but in what form San Remo is this big, always changing, massive beast of a show. So the obvious answer is not always the correct answer. They might go back to the newcomers. They might just be our... Uh, the RIA might just select somebody from the whole bunch. It might be when it gets first refusal. Again, we will keep an eye on the details as they come through. Romania, uh, Romanian media reporting that TVR are approaching potential host cities for national final shows. It could be a single show, it could be another touring selection as they did last year to showcase various cities in the country. Again, we await more details and we will let you know when that happens, but things are happening there. Spain are looking for their entries. Uh, the process is going to go something like this, um, and it's paired up with the Operation Show on Full Reality Show as well. Ten songs are going to be selected from Open Submission. Um, we December the 1st is kind of in the air as we're going to have the song selected by then so that's kind of just before that is your closing date another 10 will be invited to uh, send a song in from their broadcasters which will give them eventually a pool of 20 songs they're going to be recorded by various singers who are part of Operation Tree Unfo if you're submitting a song you can suggest uh, who you'd like to sing it but the final chance will remain with the broadcaster three of them will be selected by an internal jury to go towards the gala show and the gala show will then have a 100% public vote one single round, no no multi-rounds as they did last year. One round, 100% public vote. That will be the song for Spain at the Song Contest. And to finish our look around the countries, uh, we've got the Rumour Mill Melody Festival and Merry-Go-Round going through. Afton Bladet as calling out three names is looking to return to the contest. Irving Gamma, Nano and Victoria all up for a return there. Also in the air uh, from various other sources is John Herrick Falgren. 
naturally, it's an odd-numbered year. He only enters in odd-numbered years. He's like the opposite of Star Trek movies. Uh, John Lundvik is also looking for the right song. Jessica Anderson was offered a place, uh, reportedly, but has turned it down. Effectively, though, lots of gossip going on around Melody Festival. We only have one actually confirmed name, and that's the lovers of Valdaro, who won P4 Nasta and get an automatic berth in SVT's flagship show. <laughs> Looking forward, uh, dates for your diary in the next uh, fortnight or so. Two of note, if you're a songwriter looking to uh, get in with Song of the Kepin and Iceland, you have until October the 22nd. Deadline for submissions closes then. And October the 31st, we'll see the tickets for the six Melody Festival and shows go on sale through SVT's ticketing partners. Uh, if you're really looking to buy your tickets, Eurovision and Concert ticket sales are open as well. And Eurovision and Concert is the first week in April. April. Uh, obviously, we don't know the lineup at all there. Uh, neither do we know that from Melody Festival, but you're just going to have to cross your fingers and get the tickets in there quick. In terms of ESC Insight coming up, well, as I said, we've just posted up uh, a look back at the Welsh Junior Eurovision and National Final, uh, and there's some pictures of train stations and stuff in, as well now to keep some of you happy. Uh, also, we're asking you the team um, a couple of questions. Uh, one of them is, what Eurovision song opened up the contest for you? The kind of the key to unlock in the song contest for your experience we're posting that round we'll have some answers of that over the next two or three weeks from some of our team members as always keep an eye out for our newsletter ably edited by john paul lucas that goes out uh, the moment it's going out monthly we should have another one of those out uh, next week keeping up to date with things uh, patreon continues uh, you can support the website and our podcast and everything else that we do from as little as a dollar a week over at patreon.com slash esc insight uh, we're popping up our podcast and everything on youtube so you can listen to these on our web browser and watch a waveform of my voice you lucky lucky people youtube.com slash esc insight but if you're also uh, up and out and about if you look in the podcast section of spotify you're going to find ESC Insight there as well. So you can go in there, click on follow, and you'll get an alert inside Spotify as well. Look, we're everywhere. If you want to find us, you will find us. That's the whole goal of thing. If you want to find news and details of the Eurovision Song Contest and analysis, head back to our website, ESCinsight.com, and you'll have uh, more details also uh, from day-to-day stuff on Twitter, Facebook, and the usual social network. Hang it. Uh, 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 no, no, we're not doing that. No, instead, we're just going to say goodbye and play the guitars. The ESC Insight News podcast this week was hosted by Ewan Spence, written by Ewan Spence and Charlene Wright, ESCinsight.com.